super important for us to continue to roll out the uh, updates to highly on holdings core uh, for the good of the order uh, i do this to satisfy um, my palate because i i'm not really that satisfied there's a few folks out there on youtube that cover highly on with um, some level of consistency and i think it's super important i i think it makes for an absolutely compelling story I think the disconnect between the company and the stock price has never been so great. Uh, I think with the uh, improvements uh, on multiple fronts here, uh, especially uh, in the month of August, now on filming this, we haven't had any news. Uh, I look all the way across the internet and I cannot find one single article on Hylion. I do not know what's going on. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. I don't know. But to satisfy and to keep the topic fresh, I do really want to point out that coming into the week of September 12th, we do have uh, the next expo. Uh, and there was one uh, element uh, as unfinished business within the most recent Hylion investor presentation talking about their nationwide marketing road tour that they're going to embark on. I don't know what that's going to be. I don't know what that's going to entail, but I absolutely wanted to keep you guys abreast of everything that I'm finding, uh, offer some of my commentary on Hylion Holdings and the progress that's being made therein. Uh, I typically don't offer these to focus too much on the stock price. Um, so don't expect me to beat that drum for you. You do not expect that. I think at this point, the stock price could be at 850. It could be at 1750. I think in the long term, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's irrelevant right now. I think we can all agree that it's it's uh, extremely oversold at these levels. You can do whatever levels of technical analysis that you want. Fundamentally, the company is just fine. Company is on the precipice of stepping into potential new hybrid EX sales coming into the back half of 2021. This is the pressure that I speak about uh, building behind the dam. So guys, stick around. We're going to do this uh, deep dive on uh, highly on progress, what I've been able to find in my historical review, what I think the market is missing, what I think uh, some of the competition out there brings to bear, if anything, and what type of uh, first mover advantage I think is going to got going on here with Hylion. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to jump into this and uh, roll out a nice long Hylion video for you. followed this company long enough, you'll know that the original idea was to put this system on the trailer itself. Um, they've since moved that idea. Um, absolutely a prudent move to move it to the tractor itself. Um, uh, so many updates that have happened here recently since going public. And I really don't want to focus too much on what the developments entailed when the company was um, a, a SPAC company and, and we were privy to the first investor presentation. I go back and I review that document um, with uh, some frequency. Um, I, have an, I am an active investor in Hylion for full disclosure. And I just want to make sure that each and every one of you guys are doing your own due diligence when you're um, looking to take uh, uh, an interest in a company. Um, do not misconstrue my information as a, a call to go out there and just jump headfirst into the stock. This is a pre-revenue company. And the pressure that I feel like is building behind the dam at this point really right comes down to will they be able to sell their product or not? That's what it comes down to. And the product, the uh, EX version of the hybrid, which I was super excited about, um, I, I think this is an extremely interesting product to where they can not only go after um, new fleets uh, as well as existing fleets out there. There's some statistics to show that the chip shortage should actually give 
uh, some level of uh, tailwind for the hybrid system in that there's going to be a lot of fleets that are going to be looking to get uh, a lot more life out of their existing fleets that they have um, and look to maybe get a couple more years uh, of life expectancy out of that. Might as well take a little bit of savings, whether it be on the CNG or the diesel hybrid side of the house, right? Um, so, you know, the silence on the line is, has got me a little bit frustrated. I, some people pulse in with me sometimes and they're like, Ryan, you seem like you're pissed off when you talk about Hylion. Um, you're right. I am. I am. Uh, I, I've never seen such a severe disconnect be, between the market. I cover a lot of stocks. Absolutely. And I think there's a lot of stocks right now. Uh, just within the last year, I think the stock market has been a complete circus. I think, you know, when you throw the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency craze on there, and I know there's going to be some people that come back and they say, Ryan, you're completely off base. It's it's absolutely worth 50000 a coin or whatever it is. Um, I, you may be right. You might be right. It's just I'm entitled to my opinion, okay, as Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are entitled to theirs as well in their assessment that cryptocurrency has, in fact, no value, none, zero. It's only valued um, in the eye of the beholder, the person who's going to take on your investment, hopefully uh, in a capacity that's more than what you bought it for. You couple the AMCs of the world out there and you couple the SPAC wave of 2020 that came to the market, very, very difficult to sift through the ashes and really find out what companies out there um, have uh, a credible idea, uh, not just a lot of hype to bring to bear. And then you've got your traditional means of investing, whether it be passive investing or you've got your dividend growth strategy. Having been a value investor my whole life, I hold true on those programs um, all the way. But am I excited about jumping into a passive program right now? In other words, jumping into the S&P 500 when right now these tech valuations have basically pushed up the top 10 uh, holdings in the S&P 500. They've just run away from everything else. And everything else in the S&P 500 is really underperforming and it's being carried by the top few companies within the S&P. My point of mentioning this is where does the value lie? Okay. And to get back to my point about being frustrated, I think there's an element of manipulation to this. And I've seen the stock market for going on 30 years. I've been an investor for about 27, 28 years of my life. I've went through this many, many times. This is not my first rodeo. I think it's really one of the most un unfortunate things about the stock market, but where there will be money, there will be manipulation. Where there is big industry with lobbying power and all of the things out there that uh, seemingly have good ideas, uh, or they really just don't have good ideas, but the stock performance in the company always seem to get a pass. All right. Nicola really fits that bill for me. It really does. I don't quite understand how the company can undergo that many negative uh, elements in just such a short time and still be given a valuation uh, where it sits right now at about four and a half billion. Just it blows my mind. It, it just absolutely uh, boggles my senses. As a value investor, I, I just can't bring myself to even buy 50 shares of Nikola, um, uh, let alone put a sizable investment that could materialize over time. But the price action of the two companies couldn't be couldn't be different any more different. It's amazing to me at about two thirds of the time Nikola will go up, whereas about one third of the time uh, Hylion goes up. And it seems like those two stocks are very much correlated. Um, Hylion always gets the double dagger. It seems like Nikola will always be going up pre-market. It will always be going up post-market. It will always be going up incrementally more during the market than Hylion. And it seems like the one thing that Hylion beats Nikola on all the time is the percentage of downturn that it takes on its down days. Hylion will be down three and a half percent. Nikola will come off a half a percent to one and a half percent. And, and that's just me monitoring the stock close to every day. I monitor both stocks very, very closely. 
along with many others, I do follow the, the active markets. What am I doing about that? Not a whole lot right now. There's just not a lot of places that I see value. I am dollar cost averaging the broader markets um, from a value investing perspective. I'm not really that excited about it, to be honest with you. But the bulk of my investment dollars have flown into Hylion. It is the number one place where I actually see value here. I think we are in a phase that we are uh, in a calm before the storm. Uh, I think the vast improvements, and if you read through the investor presentation, the very last one that was released, I, I just think that anytime a piece of good news comes out with Hylion, nothing happens with the stock. I thought the ACT Expo was an absolute slam dunk for the company, and the stock went down. The stock's come off 10, 12% since the ACT Expo, and for no good reason, I will chalk it up as manipulation. So good job to the big dollars uh, for doing whatever it is that you can do. And also thank you to the SEC as well, um, who seemingly just wants to put their head up their backside and not pay attention to anything that's going on in the market. They're probably going after things that really don't matter. They, they really don't. Um, but it's really unfortunate that we can't invest in a market um, that actually gives uh, good companies a, a fair shake. And I, I think it really does call for um, retail investors uh, and hedge funds and owners and stakeholders within the company alike to band together. I really do. Um, I don't know if I sense uh, the proper sense of urgency from Hylion at this particular point. They need to be driving the nail in this uh, uh, Nicola opportunity all day. They really need to be taking the lead as uh, the performing company out there. Um, does it piss me off when I watch Hyzon ring the, the opening bell uh, and it goes up 25%? What, uh, what is that about? Um, and and that, that's the type of stuff that <clears throat> I will never understand about the market. I do acknowledge that it's there. Um, I, I can only, um, only hope that over time, good companies will indeed uh, find their way to the top. And that's usually what ends up happening. And that's where a lot of the times I say that those things typically happen when you least expect it. Um, but man alive, anybody who invested in the company above $10 a share has lost money. 100% of investors, not one, one person who has invested in the company above $10 has made any money. So 100% dismal performance, 100% of people who have gotten involved in this phenomenal opportunity are down. Now, what do we do about it? I think it helps to go back and take a reflection of the time frame and the improvements that have gone on with Hylion since becoming a publicly traded company. The first thing I wanna mention that's happened just here recently is that the hybrid EX product is available for sale. It is on Hylion.com. If you're interested in taking a look at what that new product offering uh, has, new rugged design, incorporation of some of the feedback they got from the multiple fleets that have been deployed the product over the previous years, um, it is available and it is on the website. Now let me give you my twist on this. I'm, I'm very interested to understand these process improvement initiatives with the hybrid product. I think if we had just an overwhelming uh, rush on the product that we would have heard something by now, um, I'm a little interested as to why we have not. If you have some level of speculation or you have some insight to uh, explain why that is, I would invite you to leave your comments in the comment section because Again, when people come to me and they say, Ryan, you seem to be a little bit pissed off about, you know, highly on holdings at this point when you're talking about it. These are some of the reasons that really do kind of get to me a little bit. I can understand the above board all the time, but I have to question and balance as a retail investor, one that is actively invested in highly on which means I'm not passively invested in it, guys. I'm scouring for information, okay? I just did a complete review of the CR England website to see if there's any mention at all of Hylion uh, Corporation on their website. You know how many times they mentioned it? Zero, okay? 
Now, CR England was one of the original hybrid installs back in 2017 that was supposed to enjoy this product, and I'm sure that they did. And I'm sure they did that on Hylion's dime at the time. But I'm not sure where companies like this are. There were actually 30 companies that were involved with Hylion some many years ago when the product was actually placed on the trailer itself. Where are these companies with the feedback? Is it too much to presume perhaps maybe that we can look at these companies and say that they wanted to go somewhere else? Th th those are some interesting elements to me that I don't have answers for. And if you guys actually have comments on this, please leave them. Because as the bullish thesis, I always have to say, look, perhaps maybe it's the prudent move to continue to be patient on this. Allow the pressure behind the dam to build. Where is Wegmans in this? Like, are you, are you telling me that Wegmans can't just put a hundred uh, order out there uh, just just for the just for the good of the order to say, look, man, we've used this product, we've backed it up. I mean, I stood next to Thomas Haley when he when he was uh, when he came public at the New York Stock Exchange. The very least I can do is throw a bone. Now, I hope that those discussions are happening behind the scenes. This is a lot of the reason why I come out with my videos, because you think Investor Place is going to provide you this level of 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 neutral commentary on the stock just to drive a discussion about what's going on. Hell no. It's a beautiful thing. The bottom line is the EX is out right now. It's available for sell. The question to me is, does anybody want to buy the product? That's a rhetorical question out there that I put toward Hylion that was so convicted on this product that's been put in the fleet owner's hands. It's been tested, tried, true, and validated, and the proof of concept phase is done. This is the final version that's going to be rolled out in mass scale to fleets. Where is the interest, Hylion? Where is it? Please respond. Gen up whatever inf information you need to, to do. If you need to send an email over to investor relation uh, with uh, uh, Ryan and, and Lewis, do it. Those guys are in charge of this stuff. So start barking up their tree and start understanding where the hell this information is. Because with the stock price as dismal as it is, and with 100% of retail investors and institutional investors alike that have bought the stock above $10, they're all taking a bath on the stock right now. And I don't think it's too much to ask if the information is there and available to give some level of progress report. I will offer this. This is the quote. Nationwide marketing road tour. I have no idea what that means. Here's what I'd like it to mean. What I'd like it to mean is that you can take your Hypertruck ERX Council and or any of the participants that have put the hybrid uh, product in place, Idealese, okay, NGL, some of these companies that have been noted in the evolution of Hylion, where are these companies to stand up and say, man, we use the product. We have X number of savings on our fuel side of the house, or it's emboldened our CNG fleet by adding 100 horsepower per truck per install. I, I just haven't seen any of that product validation, and I demand it. And I don't know if I'm premature on my demand. I acknowledge that perhaps maybe I am. And if I am impatient on my demands, so be it. But here's the thing. Hylion Holdings is a publicly traded company, okay? It's different in a SPAC, and it's definitely different than a private uh, company. You owe it to the stakeholders to keep them abreast of everything. Now, do I think the board members are operating with a sense of angst? Probably not. I don't sense it at all. I don't sense in Thomas Healy's delivery at all that there's any type of panic, that there's any time, uh, um, any type of um, um, room for alarm at this point. But here's the thing. We need to see product integration into the fleets. And in certain cases, we've already had that integration. Where is the statistics that came out of that product validation? If your product is so good, where are the fleets? And I took a chance and I would charge each and every one of you guys that do this. 
go into each of the websites of every single person that is um, um, has pledged their involvement with the Innovation Council, go on their specific websites and see how many times Hylion is mentioned. I found it very, very ironic that Hylion has done a very, very beautiful job on their website showcasing those members of the, of the ERX Council with the, the drape over of the hyper truck ERX to be revealed at some point in the future. The irony in it is that you go to each of those websites like Schneider, uh, like uh, CR England, uh, like some of these others. I know CR England's not on the Innovation Council, but go over to Wegmans, um, go over to Agility. Um, Agility is probably the most uh, forward leaning with Hylion, so it's probably a bad example. But look at Penske, look at Schneider, Wegmans, look at Warner, and look at their individual websites. If they were that interested in showcasing Hylion's product, then where are they in, in standing by Hylion? It seems like Hylion is kind of reaching out, and I'm not really sure if the Innovation Council members are, are actually really receiving um, that, that level of involvement. In other words, I think they're probably putting their hand out like, yeah, we'll take our free demo unit. We'll demo it to hell. Hell, we'll even give you some positive feedback on it. But as far as a hard and fast commitment, let's be real. We have not seen that outside of three companies, three, Detmar Logistics, Agility, and uh, ANG. Those are the three, okay? So the, these are the elements of, of, of understanding the, the highly on opportunity and understanding the lack of perceived involvement from the Innovation Council thus far. And again, people hit me up and they're like, Ryan, you just got to be patient. You, you're, you, it seems like you're frustrated. I am. I am frustrated because where is Anheuser-Busch? Look, I, I think on the onset as a bullish investor in this company that, yeah, Anheuser-Busch could just as easily put in an order for a thousand Hypertruck ERX and, and, and establish their name uh, in line in the queue for the Hypertruck ERX. Is that premature because they haven't done the proof of concept? Okay, you got me there. But where are the order uh, books stacking up for the uh, EX product? Where is that? The product validation is complete. The time to be selling those units is now. And outside of a few hundred uh, uh, bulk orders that have come through for a, a few strategic uh, customers, where are the thousand orders that are supposed to be uh, queued up for 2022? If you notice the order book in 2024 is supposed to sell about 15,000 of these hybrid EX units, unless Hylion has a rabbit up their sleeve, I'd really like to know that we're marching toward that end. And is that too much to ask? Is, is the hope on just a hope that those orders are just going to fill themselves? Okay. It, are, are, is the pressure be, behind the dam building insofar as companies really do have an inherent uh, interest in this company? I don't know. The verdict is still out because we go through stretches like this of 10 days where we don't hear a word on the company. Very, very frustrating at this point where I think that the opportunity is right there and I don't think we're seizing the moment. I don't. And that's the perception that I get. I could be totally wrong. Leave your comments at the bottom if you think I'm completely wrong. But it's the perception that's being given off. I hope I'm wrong. And I actually think that I am. But, 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 but has there really been... Um, so much interest going on behind the scenes that none of it can be shared with the public. I, I don't, I don't understand that at all. We need to sell the EX unit and we need to do it yesterday. Okay. Um, I do charge highly on with putting out some information. I'm quite frankly tired with the power of social media and internet. Um, if the investor relations uh, personnel or the, um, vice president of human relations or whoever the hell it is with Hylion um, can't at least do what it is that I do for free. I mean, they're probably making sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year. Do your job. Do your job. I'm doing this for free. Free. Nobody pays me to do this. I electively do this, okay, for free because I'm genuinely interested in, mm, I don't know, saving the planet maybe which is what this entire initiative is 
for the TCO over the Hypertruck ERX for uh, fleet owners, the numbers make sense. So my, my impasse is you've got a bunch of fleet owners that are just sitting back on their haunches. We have a government that talked about the world coming to an end in 10 years because um, we're ruining it. But it doesn't seem that there's a sense of urgency to really encourage any type of incentive for fleets to move. And it's, it's as if people are just sitting back and they're looking at who's going to blink first. Is it going to be industry? Is it going to be the government? Is it going to be these companies that are going through initial stage proof of concept? And so they're not going to put big orders on the books before, you know, those kinks are worked out, right, on some of this new technology that's being rolled out. Are these trucks going to be able to, to, to last seven years? Are the battery packs going to perform at that thousand mile clip throughout the life of the program? I don't know, right? See, there, these are questions that we don't know. Are we going to realize a thousand miles on I-10, the same as we do up north on I-80? On I, I-80? So these are some of the things that we need to kind of understand a little bit. And I think we could probably use a little bit of help from this industry if they cared that much. Um, that there's an interesting membership to the EPA program, and I think it's Green Path, I believe. I looked on there. Hylion is not a member, and I don't know. I don't know what that what that entails. Um, there was only one Schneider was a member uh, of the. I think I think it was Green Path. It's an EPA program. I could be misstating the program. I do apologize, but I went over and I I linked into that website to look and see if Hylion was a member of it, and it's not. Um, you know, CR England is <laughs> so, you know, what, what gives, and, and I, 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 I read through it and I was like, well, they're interested in, in reducing the NOx emissions, um, and re reducing the carbon footprint. You know, if, if these companies are part of that, so they can fly the flag, um, that they're taking ample steps toward a, a greener future, then, then what is it, what is their incentive to change what's under the hood at this point? Right. Hylion's got a pretty interesting cell if they're on an island and their 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 only cell is TCO because companies are not going to bet on new technology if it's standalone TCO um, on its own. They're just not because the initial uh, cost on the onset is going to be greater for the new technology. If the new technology is is not proven, uh, then they're not going to take that that chance unless the incentive is provided to take that chance. A and again, this is a big reason why I turned off my TV and I don't know. For all I know, the Green New Deal could be passed through Congress, but I haven't heard anything. I've heard that it's dead on arrival and that they're trying to get some element through in the infrastructure bill. <laughs> don't hold your breath. It's just the same old bureaucracy like anything. We have a good idea um, that's kind of ready to go. But I, I think uh, there's going to need to be some dominoes that fall. And this is the pressure in the dam. I think there's been no other time during the evolution of Hylion that's more critical than right now. Um, I think there is a first mover advantage by a long shot for Hylion. They are going through right now what Nikola is going to be forced to go through in a couple of years, right? So if Nikola can roll a truck down the hill uh, and... Uh, and, and and just sound really, really fancy with their non-existent infrastructure and not be forthcoming uh, with industry or with their delivery on how much it's actually going to take to take a truck from ground, from, from scratch, from cradle to grave, or from inception to, to production and, and sell products on. Um, then, then that's that's really the fallacy in the stock market that I see when comparing these two companies, which um, it's like night and day when I look at them. I just I just can't even understand uh, how with as much controversy has surrounded Nikola um, all the way from the beginning, all the way from the beginning, all the uh, deceit and all the uh, misrepresentation of what they do all of the misrepresentation of what they actually had for a demo and a promo, right? They said they did basically and just lied about it and they didn't. Okay. And it, it's, it really gets me interested when you go into the highly, uh, the um, Nicola thread and, and, and read about all the people who really just don't understand what they're investing in. They really don't. Um, they're investing in this, in this hype, but 
I come back to Hylian a little bit and I have to press and say, look, if my thesis and interest is only in the Hylian story, we need to stay in front of the game here. And, and as much as an ask as I think that this is, um, I, I think Hylian needs to keep that uh, first mover position. And I think they need to keep their dominant position in, in really striving toward that end of getting these products out there into the marketplace. And right now, I just have the perception that there is no demand on the product. I hope I'm wrong. You can tell me I'm wrong in the comment section. That would be absolutely great. I hope that I am. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm still bullish on the company because my thesis and where my money is, is that there is a need for this product. How we get to that end, how we get those dominoes to start to fall, how we get that product in the hands of industry with or without those government incentives that I talk about, I don't care how we get there. It just needs to be. That product needs to be put into good use in the fleet so we can start to get that validation back from the very companies that we're trying to help. In that these innovation council, man, they play a critical role in this in that it's only going to take one showcasing of the Hypertruck ERX alongside Schneider, and they can actually show what the product does, what it actually saves. What is the bottom line, Thomas? What is the bottom line for the product? You, you, say, you, you started with 30% fuel savings, and it's trimmed down a, a lot since then. The Bazinga report that came out, um, the, the, or the Benito report that came out, basically saying that there's not that much fuel savings at all. The Northwest companies that took this with Tillamook Creamery and others said that there was fuel savings. Well, how much? We don't know because that information has really never been disclosed um, through the public forum. Are they doing repeat orders up in, in those Oregon companies? I haven't heard anything from them. So, so the real interest to, to, to me is understanding that, you know, we've gone through the first, second, third phase of rollout of the hybrid product. We've incorporated the new improvements as they've been provided to highly on, but what, what has come of it? Where is the interest that's been garnered in these in these in these companies? And I, I would venture to guess that they just don't feel enough pressure from the government like they do in California, which if, if highly on smart, they'll just sell to California. If they're the ones that want to take the initiative and save the money and put products in place that they know that the TCO is going to be there for the good of the environment, good on California and the few others that are doing that. For all the other companies out there that are going to try to run through states that, that don't want to take this initiative, then just don't run through the state. OK, and, and, and that'll hurt those local states economies and it'll embolden the, the uh, California's. OK, and the others that look to deploy um, this initiative. My point is get on board or get the hell out of the way. Right. And I think the first mover advantage is there to be taken advantage of. Hylion is the only solution that I actually see right now that is viable to be put into action as of yesterday. And I, I just I don't understand. I look every single day for articles online and I just don't find it. OK. So that's how I, I think it's super important with the integration of the Innovation Council, how they're going to realize this nationwide marketing road tour. We'll see. Um, my patience is gone. My patience is gone with this company. It's been gone for a long, long, long time. So if you want to come to me and you say, Ryan, you need to have more patience, I'm, I'm, I, I disagree. My patience is over. Does that mean that it affects my conviction on the company or it affects my position on the stock? Hell no. I'm a three decade investor. I know how to handle situations like this, but my patience is gone and it's absolutely gone for all the right reasons. I, I think that there could be absolutely more. There, there has been more in the last couple months of outreach and there needs to be more. It need, there needs to be more no matter what the stock price does. They just need to do it because it's the right thing to do and it's in line with their integrity uh, pillar within the program on to always operate with truth and integrity in everything that they do.
Okay, They need to start being more forthcoming about the bottom dollar results and what that proof of concept means. Talk more about the OEM hubs. They were asked about it on the last earnings call, and Thomas Healy did not do a very good job of explaining that those costs will come down the line on what that's actually going to be, what the breakdown is going to be. All we have at this point is the hybrid unit is going to cost about twenty-five to 30000 bucks, and that's it. What goes into those components? What are the critical components on the supply line? Are there critical components on that supply line that are not currently available right now with the current chip shortage? Is the chip shortage the reason why the stock's in the shitter all the time? We don't know. Just be a little bit more forthcoming with what you got going on because it, it, it seems to me that they 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 work in somewhat of this vacuum in, in in a little bit of capacity, a lot like Nikola and Hyzon and the other companies at the TCO Expo, in that most everything that they said was all fluff and garbage and all just hey, we can just finance our way to the moon. And hey, yeah, we just need to build these infrastructures from thin air and then everything will be okay. We just need to drive down the price of hydrogen to four dollars and that will be the optimal price thomas we've got this under control there's no acknowledgement to that actually not happening in real life because the cost to produce the hydrogen and especially the cost to transport the highly uh, hydrogen currently does not exist but when it does exist that infrastructure will need to be paid for right so my, I don't want Hylion to get caught up in this whole, like, we have the greatest solution ever. Um, we can rely on our morals. And when it happens, it happens. That's just not going to be good enough. It's not going to be good enough for me. It's not going to be good enough for the opportunity of a lifetime that I feel is really right there for the taking. It really is right there for the taking. We are investing in a company here that is taking the absolute best fuel source and, and driving long haul shipping in the class eight space. And if the domestic market doesn't want to play ball, then go international. If you just want to conquer California and then go the hell international and forget this stupid fickle domestic market, these companies have been around for a hundred years and they've had their head up their ass for a hundred years the same. They want to put a flag of environmental stewardship alongside their name. And that's really all they want to do because they're not going to do what they're supposed to do unless they're forced to do it. The last thing I want to talk about a little bit is the establishment of the connections on the board. My charge for the board is to start earning your pay. I've never earned over $100,000, and there's a lot of retail investors that are very, very savvy on this company, and they're savvy about the opportunity that will come to fruition. It will. This company will be fine. It will sell product, both of them, and it will be a household name 10 years from now, okay? But you're going to have to earn it. And I think a big key compo per, uh, component of that um, is their board of governance, their board of directors that they have. Uh, Ed Olcola, Thomas Healy is part of the board, Andrew Card, right? who is part of the old uh, Department of Transportation um, under George W. Bush and uh, 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 George Bush Sr. Uh, Rob Knight, very interesting character, who's also on the board with Schneider, ironically. You mean to tell me that these guys can't pick up the freaking phone? I do this at work all the time. All right. It's amazing to me. It's like, well, send 12 emails. No, F the email. Just pick up the freaking phone and call these people and tell them to put out a news release and say, here's what's freaking going on. And I, I, I question whether or not these things are going on because we don't hear about these things going on. OK, let's go, Bobby. Let's take care of business and get going. Stefan Peng. OK, he's got a degree in uh, certified financial accounting. OK, get going. I don't know what your problem is. Elaine Chow, one of the most recent and, and interesting figures to add to the board. We, we hired you on to the board for your connections. Make it happen. Okay. So my enchar entire charge to the board, Vinch Cubbage has been there since the beginning. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest shareholders actually since the SPAC. And the frustrating part about this whole process is the longer things go on and the reason why I have no, frustrate, uh, no um, uh, patience for the stock and it's been gone for a long, long time. These uh, initial uh, warrant holders, the, the warrants went to the company 
And these initial shareholders got a ton of shares in Hylion for free. And the only ones that are really holding the bag are public investors. Retail, hedge funds, and large institutions right now are holding the bag. You, you're part of the board of directors for your connections. Make it happen. Make it happen. I don't care if you got to pick up the phone. I don't care if you need to send Morse code. I don't need. I don't care if you need to start sending smoke signals across the brow. All right. Start m making some stuff happen. If you need to quit your board of directors with the six other board of directors that you sit, then quit those other ones. If you can't put proper acknowledgement into the time necessary to, to make stuff happen, I don't know. Maybe they need to put me on the board of directors. All right. I, how about that? Put me on the board of directors. I'll make stuff happen. I'll show you guys how to actually work a 24 hour day. It's amazing. Okay. You don't need to sleep 12 hours a night and, and go to work and work for five hours. Okay. I would expect that you guys are cranking and you're, and you're working at least 20 hours a day. That's my expectation. If that's going on, fantastic. If it's not, you need to get there. Uh, Mary Gostansky, I'd go to war with this lady. This this lady's uh, resume is phenomenal, phenomenal. And then finally, the addition of Dennis Gallagher is the COO position that's really going to help push this commercialization aspect of both of their products. All the positions are, are, are in place, valuing a pre-revenue company at this point. With this board right here, at least, at least gets, gets a million dollar uh, uh, bump in their valuation, at least. I think the board alone is, is, is worth a million on, on just valuation. It's incredible. Their board, solid as a rock. But they need to start realizing what it is the board of directors is there for. Start realizing some of these connections. I'll sum up by saying this. The improvements to the battery system down to an industry unmatched standard of eight minutes is unprecedented. Um, the opportunity to improve and make different versions of the Hypertruck ERX to respond to the fuel credits and the requirements of trucks to operate and be eligible for those fuel credits if it can go all electric for 75 miles um, and a thousand on the extended range for the Hypertruck ERX is incredible. It's incredible. When I look at the product in its purest form, I've never, ever seen a, a, a company that in 2021, I've been so excited about the value is there. When the value is realized into the future, I have no idea. It's, it's not for me to say. It's not for me to speculate. It's not for me to say one way or the other that the stock is going to five or it's going to 20. I have no idea. I don't really care at this point. What I care about is this company finding its potential okay the one product is there the second product their flagship product which i think both of them they're calling for in 2024 a nice healthy mix of about fifteen thousand, give or take of each unit that we are a long way away from that and again back to my point about the perception that there's lack of interest in the industry Again, if somebody want, wants in the comments to tell me I'm completely off base and I'm an asshole for making that assessment, I really try to drive toward the truth. And I don't think my perception is as far off. And I think I speak for a lot of investors out there, th th not the majority, but 100% of investors out there that are indeed bag holders right now. We are owed more. We are owed more than what is being provided. And if that hard work is going on behind the scenes, one of two things are happening. One, the company is killing it and they're making deals hand over fist the way that I think that they are. Or two, they really just haven't garnered the interest because they're taking a blase, lackadaisical approach to this. And I think that's the wrong approach. I think as the first mover position, I think you need to run the race as if you're racing against yourself not against others because yeah you do have about a two-year head start but these other things are going to start to catch on and there's no telling what's going to happen within the industry to the opportunity that promotes hydrogen fuel cell the ability of government grants to start to build up that infrastructure and then you're going to lose your first mover advantage and you're also going to lose whatever momentum um, was there for the taking at the time that you could have 
taking it. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I want to make sure and subscribe to the channel to catch as many highly on videos as I feel appropriate to put out at the time that I do. When this thing starts to move north uh, towards some of the price targets that are out there at around the 17, 18 level, um, I will stop making these videos altogether. Um, the next video we'll make will be when it meets that very first milestone down the line. Um, and, and we will readdress and we will re-rack about some of these things that we are speculating on now coming to fruition, coming to reality, having that integration happen, having this all-star board of directors that we've put into place start to really materialize some value for Hylion. They're not just there to keep the, the, the seat warm, okay? They are provided a phone, I'm quite certain. Use it. Pick it up and call all these points of contacts that you uh, brag about so elegantly in your resume, okay? If I knew these people, bring it. I would pick up the phone and freaking call. I would be like, this is so-and-so, board of directors with Hylion. I'd like to introduce you to my product because seemingly you have no freaking idea that we even exist. Guys, leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Share the video with anybody out there that you know is interested in the Hylion content, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the message. And good luck in your investment future.